Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Stand up. It's time to give your career an edge. Stand out with a professional diploma from DBS. Stand by for part-time learning that works for you and your ambitions. Choose from over 30 professional diplomas starting this January and February at dbs.ie. DBS. Ambition realised. At Joe Norris Motors Peugeot, we're known for our exciting range of award-winning cars and SUVs. Now we've created a range that's electrifying. The fully electric E208, striking and distinctive. The fully electric E2008, compact SUV, smooth and spacious. And the 3008 plug-in hybrid, combining advanced electric and petrol engine technology. To book a test drive at Joe Norris Motors Peugeot, visit joenorrismotors.ie. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The history of man shows that we find it almost impossible to differentiate between saint and devil. And the smoke of countless fires has consumed the bodies of a considerable number of self-styled healers and mystics who have been condemned by society as devils and burnt at the stake, while their followers mourned them as saints. But... No one person in history has aroused the flaming controversy that still surrounds the life and death of a Russian monk named Rasputin. I am Rasputin, the little father. Confess your sins to me and you will gain salvation. But I have nothing to confess, father. Oh, then you cannot gain salvation. Come, give me your shawl and we will sin together and repent together. I will save you in spite of yourself. Now, give me your shawl. Take my shawl. And the knife. Huh? I'll give you death. Monster! Cry, oh. Antichrist! Oh. mystery drama Courtyard of Death was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Help the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign off tablets. S I N E O F F, the sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sign off, the sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And Sinoff doesn't stop there. Have you tried Sinoff Sinus Spray, the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief? It works in seconds. 
That's Sign Off Sinus Spray. When sinus flares up, use Sign Off tablets and spray only as directed. S I N E O F F. Sign Off. Exactly. Sign Off. The sinus medicines in the bright red box. For the fun and thrills of thoroughbred racing at its finest. Racing every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with post time at 105. Louisiana Downs with the Daily Double and the Exactas. Louisiana Downs, Highway 20, Bossier City. Louisiana Downs, where you come first. Excitement's high, lots of fun. The action's great when they're on the run. Direct phone for information, 263-1174. In 1915, the court of Tsar Nicholas of Russia was dominated by a drunken, dissolute monk who had taken the name Rasputin. And it was Rasputin's notorious orgies that ultimately led to his banishment from court, despite the fact that Rasputin wielded extraordinary power over the Tsar and the Tsarina because of his ability to ease the pain of their only child. The Tsarevich, heir to the Russian throne, had been born a hemophiliac, a victim of the bleeding disease. And when Rasputin appeared at court, his hypnotic voice and soothing touch did the Tsarevich more good than any doctor's prescription. Well, Dr. Lasavet, how is he? How is my son? The Tsarevich is resting, Your Highness. Comfortably. Reasonably so. Is he in pain? Oh, it's hard to tell. You and the other court physicians are incapable of helping my son. But I know someone who can. Rasputin. Yes, La Sauvère. Rasputin. Whose name brings that grimace of disgust to your lips. But whose touch brings comfort to my son. Your Highness, I dare not presume, but you know I speak out of my love for you and the Tsar. You make a mistake placing Russia's fate in the hands of this charlatan, this drunken debaucher of the ladies of your court. He'll surely bring ruin to Russia. You will see to it that Rasputin is brought back to court as soon as possible. We repent us of our sins, O Lord. And we sin only so that we can show you true contrition. Reverend Father, I seek your permission to open the door since I know the message will be for me. How would you know that, my son? It is an inner voice that tells me. A voice that has never before been wrong. It tells me that there will be a summons from the Tsarina because the Tsarevich is bleeding again. And he needs me. Permission granted, my son. I am here by order of Nicholas, Tsar of all the Russias. I come for the monk Rasputin. His presence is demanded at court. Revich and I are in your debt. You have worked your miracle. My son smiles in his sleep. The pain has gone. Ah, well, the miracles are not mine, but the Lord's, madame. Oh, the devil's. La Sauvère, what are you doing here? Once again serving as a messenger, your highness. Colonel Amdur seeks an audience. I'm going to my quarters, madame. The Tsarevich will sleep through the night. A man of God and the chief of the secret police have little to share. Little father, I came because I knew I would find you here. What Colonel Amdur has to say concerns you. 
But, Colonel Amdur, this is preposterous. I will not tolerate your Krana withdrawing protection from the little father here. Your Highness is the head of the secret police. I can no longer in all conscience furnish any protection to Rasputin. You speak of conscience, Colonel. What is it that weighs so heavily upon your sense of duty? Treachery, Your Highness. I assume, Colonel, you have some proof of these charges, whatever they are. Your Highness, here are the documents. Yes. Yes, I can see that these have something to do with medical supplies and the war, but I have no time to read them through. These documents show that Rasputin has sold millions of rubles worth of medical supplies to Germany, a country which is waging war against us. And do your documents explain why our little father would do this? Yes, Your Majesty. To line his pockets. As payment, Rasputin has been given shares in the Suddeutsche Munitions Factory, as well as shares in Taunus Manufacturing and Copernicus Industries in Bavaria. Your Highness perhaps knows of these companies. Little father, tell Colonel Amdur what you have told the Tsar and me. Oh, uh, madame, it will make no difference to him. Tell him. It is a prophecy, Colonel, and it is this. If I die at the hands of the nobility or members of the court, the Tsar and the Tsarina will lose their crown and their son within six months of my death. Come in. Dr. Lassover. I arranged for you to be admitted privately. Expressly to meet this young lady. Her name is Barbara. Oh, she's most certainly worth meeting, but... Barbara and... is going to kill Rasputin. Why? Why do you tell me this, Colonel? I dissociate... Yes, 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 Doctor. Very commendable and cautious. But do you think I would risk my position unless I were absolutely certain about this lady? What makes you so certain... Three months ago, my sister and I were walking along the Nevsky Prospect. Uh, Rasputin was driving by in his carriage. He saw my sister, had the coachman stop, and alighted from the carriage and accosted her. She tried to push by him. He became insistent, and then, despite my screams, he picked her up bodily and threw her into his carriage and drove off. Then neither I nor my family have seen her since. But we know where she is. What? Yes, yes. She's in the quarters of Rasputin in the palace. I brought you here, Doctor, for you to show Barbara exactly where to strike Rasputin with a knife so that the thrust will be certain to kill him. Haven't you overlooked the fact that before Barbara can strike... She must be close enough to strike. Use your eyes and wits, Doctor. Isn't she beautiful? Extremely. Don't you know that it's the custom of this lecher to hold audiences just like a reigning monarch every day from 10 to 12 in the morning? But surely he'll recognize Barbara as the sister. We can't be certain of that, but even if he does, it's all the better for our plan. I don't see how. Well, Barbara will join the line of supplicants outside Rasputin's apartments tomorrow morning. It is his custom to come out and look over the waiting petitioners before he sees them. It is also his custom to select any beautiful young women and take them into his private chamber before he deals with the others. He's certain to pick Barbara, you agree? Yes. And sir. suppose he recognizes her as the sister of the girl he abducted. Could there be anything more natural than that she should come to ask about her sister? To plead, to beg, with tears in my eyes and trembling lips, to ask for grace. Exactly. The whole world knows how Rasputin dispenses grace. And where? In his private room. Exactly. And when he has you in the room and attempts to take you in his arms, then... Doctor, you will show her exactly where to strike. There he is! The little father! 
<laughs> Little sister, do I know you? You remember me? Oh, thank God you remember me. Come, little sister. The Lord will prepare thy going out and thy coming in. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, then you will tell me how my sister is doing, won't you? Your, your sister? Oh, then you don't remember. No. No, oh. you mustn't let those beautiful eyes fill with tears. Uh, try to recall for me. Netsky Prospect. It was months ago. I was walking with my sister, and you passed by in your carriage. Ah, yes, yes. The little flower that I plucked off the street and exorcised the devils within her. Uh, she is safe, your sister. <gasps> she has found salvation with me. Oh, oh, my parents will be so happy to see that little father. May I see her? After we make sure that you are without sin, little sister. Uh, come on. Uh, we'll pray together. Now, this is the cleansing room. It is here you will find salvation. But, little father... Oh, come, I... oh, come. It's so dark. I can't... Dark rooms to hear dark tales. Uh, you can start by removing your shawl. <laughs> There's only Our Lady to see you. Olga, my sister. Where is she? In good time, little bird, in good time. You mustn't be saved. <sighs> give me your shawl. I'll give you... Okay. Monster. Monster. Die. Die. Ah. Die. Ah. Die. I cleansed myself, little father. Your death will bring me salvation. Remember who it was that sent you there as you burn in hellfire. Rasputin. Saint or devil? The arguments still rage. But the single most powerful man in Russia lay on the floor of the palace in St. Petersburg while his lifeblood ebbed away. Was this to be his end? We'll be back shortly with the answer and act two. Fresh new spirit sweeping the land. A spirit of honesty and integrity. A free spirit. A spirit that demands products which fill your utilitarian needs while satisfying your good taste and your desire for economy. We at Buick have felt the spirit and are dedicated to your sense of freedom. Our crisply designed, solidly built 1975 Buicks will bring joy even to the most demanding of free spirits. The 1975 Buick Electra, La Sabre, Riviera, Century, Skylark, Apollo, and the gutsy new Buick Skyhawk are dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Hey, there's an exciting new attitude at Buick. Take advantage of it at your local Buick dealer. Cowboys play the Redskins this Thanksgiving. You don't plan to miss it, but make today an extra special one for your entire family. Treat them to a traditional Thanksgiving feast at the Marriott before the game. Park free at the Marriott, then take their express bus direct to Texas Stadium. The buffet opens at 11 o'clock, so you'll have plenty of time to enjoy a leisurely meal. And just listen to this menu. Hold roast turkey and ham, carved to order. Fried chicken, salad, vegetables, potatoes and gravy, and of course, pumpkin pie and mincemeat pie. All you can eat for only $4.95. That's right, only $4.95. No dinner reservations are necessary, but please call ahead if you want a seat on the bus. Bring your family to the Marriott this Thanksgiving. Let the Marriott serve you and then take you to the game. That's the Marriott Motor Hotel across from Market Hall. 
The year was 1915, and the Russian imperial court seethed with intrigue. At the center was the bizarre figure of Rasputin. Dissolute, drunken Rasputin openly boasted of his influence with the Tsar and the Tsarina. Idolized by half the nation as a saint and a healer, Rasputin was loathed, feared, and plotted against by the other half. One such plot resulted in a stabbing which wounded him so seriously he has been hovering between life and death for days. You will be careful to keep this bandage in place, little father. And you will also refrain from drinking. <sighs> Wine makes blood, Dr. Lassovert. It will be good for me. For just once. Listen to the doctor. Perhaps it would have been better had I died. Oh. How can you say that? Had I died, you and the Tsar would be safe. There are many who still plot against me, and should they succeed, madame, you and your family will lose the throne within six months of my death. You should rest more and talk less. In ten days, I shall be in Tobolsk. But that's in Siberia. My birthplace, little mother. I feel the Lord wishes me to revisit the province where I was born. Out of the question. I will not be responsible for your health if you undertake such a journey. I do God's will only. And if God wills it, I shall return. Oh, you must, little father. You must. If Rasputin undertakes this journey, it will be against my orders. I take note of that, Lassover. And risking your highness's displeasure... I remind you that your niece, Princess Arena, and her husband have been waiting in audience with you for some hours. If they wish to see me, have them shown in here. But, your highness, neither the princess nor Count Elston has ever met the little father. And <gasps> I'm uncertain... But of course. Of course. It will be perfect. What? The train. Count Elston's private train. He will be delighted to lend it to the little father for his journey. This is not a task for the head of the Okrana guarding a train. Lassover, couldn't you have let the scoundrel die? I'm afraid it was a higher power than mine. Ah, yes. The picture of the Holy Virgin that saved the life of the Holy Rasputin. Barbara's knife would have pierced a vital organ had it not been deflected by the wooden frame of the picture of the Virgin Mary. Are you becoming a disciple of the monk then, Doctor? Not at all. It just seems a strange coincidence. Of which he's made more capital with Her Highness. Are you still determined to remove Rasputin? He's vermin. And vermin must be exterminated. Russia must be saved from him. And at the same time, you save Mother Russia. You ensure your continuation as the head of the Ukraine. Oh, you know something. What have you heard? Only the gossip of the court. Her Highness is unhappy with your removal of the guard from this. Planet. I don't care about my career. You must believe that the first motive I have for seeing that the devil dies is to save Russia. Colonel Amter, it's a pleasure to see you again, old friend. I am honored, Count Elston. Doubly honored by your wife's presence. The arena wouldn't hear of our turning over the train without inspecting it and seeing that everything was in order. And also removing some of my personal belongings. I've heard that this monk isn't the neatest to death. Anything you've heard, Princess, is not only true, but also probably understated. Then, Felix, why are we lending our train to Rasputin? Because Alexandra asked us to, my sweet. May I help you on, Princess? Thank you. Dr. Lassever, this is the Princess Arena and her husband, Count Elston. Dr. Okay. Lassever and I are old friends. I'm delighted, but also surprised to see him here. Your aunt insisted that he be aboard to check on your guest's health. 
You know, of course, that it was his skill that helped save Rasputin's life. I'd heard. Congratulations, Doctor. Thank you, Princess. I'm sure you gentlemen will excuse me. Felix, darling, I shall be in my car if you want me. Colonel, I have an unpleasant task to perform. I have a message from Her Highness. I wish that she'd chosen some other messenger, but... It's my duty to inform you that you are relieved of your duties as head of the Okrana. So, it's happened. Rasputin wins. When does this order take effect? As of now. Your replacement, Major General Orloff, is on his way. Sorry, Sergei. I, too, Your Excellency. For you, for myself, for Her Highness, and for Russia. Is that you, Felix? Darling? I do hope you're not annoyed. Who are you? A man of God, princess. And a friend of your Aunt Alexandra. You... You're a Rasputin. Is it my appearance that surprises you? Surely you've heard about me. Have you seen my husband? Not yet, dear lady. I first wanted to... to thank you personally for your kindness in lending me this train. Aunt Alexandra told me that you would return our train by the first of the month. Yeah. Did she also tell you that Rasputin does what he likes when he likes? If you'll excuse me, I'll join my husband. But first, you will sit on my knees and tell me about your sins. You will take your hand off my wrist. Oh, don't be ashamed of your sins. If you're wise, you'll accept salvation at my hands. Yes. You will sin as you have never sinned. You will reach heights of ecstasy that you've only dreamed of in your darkest dreams. And then... Then we will repent and earn our salvation together. Uh, tell my husband. He'll kill you. Oh, the Count is wiser than you. God protects me, and the Count knows better than to interfere with... God! Oh. Uh. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The devil made your nails sharp. Get out. Get out of this car before I put your eyes out. The devil triumphs now. But God will be victorious. Finally. Irina. Irina, are you all right? Oh, Felix, darling, you mustn't concern yourself about me. I, I just need rest. Not concern myself about you? That's like asking a bird not to fly. Irina, it's been two weeks since you had the fall on the train, and since then you've rarely been out of your room. The doctor said I should rest. I know, but the fall wasn't that bad. He said you just received a bruise on your forehead, and it shouldn't have had this much effect on you. I'll be all right, Felix. I promise. My love, you, you've you been such a dreadful liar all your life. What is it? What really is troubling you? Now is no time to talk about it, Felix. It will pass. And the nightmares. They don't seem to be improving. Every night I have to wake you and hold you. Oh, is that so terrible, Felix? No, not the holding, darling. Never that. But the nightmares and your screams. Something must have terrified oh, you. Please, please Felix. I'll be better, I promise. If you'll just stop trying to find out. Stop trying to find out what's driving my wife close to a nervous breakdown? Is that what you ask of me? Yes. Now, you are afraid. That's where the nightmares come from, from fear. Now, what is it you fear? Oh, just stupidity. Just 
silly little things that you wouldn't understand. Try me. No. No, not now. Irina, no. what really happened on the train? You will be angry. Perhaps. But wouldn't you rather see me angry than tortured the way I am now? Rasputin. Rasputin? He came to my car when I was packing my things. And what happened? Nothing. I'm being stupid. It was nothing. Nothing that a woman such as I shouldn't have been able to handle. He wouldn't have dared. He knew who you were. He talked about my sins. He wanted me to gain salvation by sinning with him. And when I refused and I threatened to tell you, he... He laughed. Oh, Felix, come back. Felix, where are you going? Your nightmares are over. Felix, please, if you love me, come back and listen. No, I'm here. I'm here. He laughed because of his power over Aunt Alexandra. He said that if you complained about him to her, she'd believe that you were in league with the devil, as all of his enemies must be. But Alexandra loves you. She knows that she you... She loves her son more. And the bruise. How did you come by the bruise? When I struggled with him and finally broke away from his grasp, he became enraged. He struck me. He... Uh, I fell. Then he left. But I know he still wants me, and I'm afraid. Marina, my darling, I swear to you that you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear, because now that you have told me this, Rasputin is as good as dead. And now Rasputin has added a powerful and implacable enemy to the long list of men and women who plotted against his life. But so far, he has survived all the plots and attempts to kill him. However, Count Elston was by far the most powerful and determined of Rasputin's foes. I'll be back shortly with Act Three to take you further along on this journey to the cellars of death. a tall, frosty glass of Amplitude? Well, if your beer is Budweiser, you've had it often. Amplitude is a fancy word for the entire taste phenomenon, the total experience of flavor. Next time you take a healthy swallow of Bud, watch what happens. Think about the sensations you're experiencing. Notice how the flavor of Bud comes on nice and easy. Not too strong, not too quick. Just right. Notice the clean, crisp togetherness of Bud's taste. Everything in perfect balance, with no single element jumping out at you. And there'll be no aftertaste either, no hanging on. And you'll be refreshed and ready for another glassful. Actually, Bud drinkers have been experiencing amplitude for years, but they never phrase it that way. They just say, Budweiser. And that says it all. Anheuser-Busch. St. Louis. Russian court in the year 1915 as a hotbed of corruption and deceit overlaid by orgiastic religious hysteria. This last was brought about through the influence of a peasant monk named Rasputin. Rasputin openly lived a life of drunken debauchery practicing what he preached in order to find true repentance and salvation one must sin. Rasputin sinned and in sinning incurred many enemies, among them one of the most powerful nobles in Russia, Count Felix Elston. Sergei, thank you for your promptness. I apologize for not delivering the note in person. I am honored and pleased that you thought of me, Count. 
Or may I help your excellency? How many men have you killed? Well, am I to include those I had executed when I was in command of the secret police? No, no, no. Personally. Three? Hmm. I had thought it was more. I wish to heaven it had been at least one more. Anyone I know? I believe he recently carried a scar on his face made by your wife's fingernail. You insolent dog! You knew about Rasputin and Irina and you oh, didn't... Please, your excellency. I, I meant no offense. Uh, I, I wish the devil were burning in hell. I tried to say to me, now please let go of my throat. And Rasputin knew. He found out you sent that woman to kill him, and that's why he had you replaced as head of the Okran. He would have had me dismissed even if I hadn't tried to have him killed. I'm still Colonel Sergei Andor. I'm sure if Rasputin has his way, I shall shortly be sent to the front to fight the Germans. I must not let that happen. I need you, Colonel. What for? To help me kill Rasputin. <laughs> Colonel, if I may say so, all of the methods you've suggested are too professional. I thought that's why you wanted my help, because I am a professional. The picture of Rasputin that everyone paints for me is that of a cunning peasant. I am convinced that cunning peasant has a nose that sniffs out danger to himself and smells plots even before they're hatched. Perhaps. But he didn't suspect Barbara. If it hadn't been for that painting, he'd be dead now. True. If we could only find someone whom Rasputin would trust implicitly. Well, that would have to be someone he knew well. Or had good reason to trust. This time, Rasputin must not escape. Then we must have the perfect assassin. Where do we find him? Here. Me. You? An assassin. In this case, a patriot, and one we both can trust. What makes you think you could gain Rasputin's confidence? You forget that he's a peasant. That would hardly seem to recommend you to him. Sergei, I've yet to meet a peasant who wasn't a snob at heart. From all that I hear, Rasputin is also greedy beyond belief. He'd be flattered to be on intimate terms with Count Elston, the wealthiest noble in Russia. Find me someone to introduce me to him under the right auspices. And I'll wager a thousand rubles I'm right. And if you're not? I'll pay you a thousand rubles and we'll have to find another plan. Come, Felix, drink up. Wine is good for the soul. Little father, I don't think our acquaintance has progressed to the point where you can call a prince of the blood by his given name. Huh? <laughs> Oh, I apologize. I apologize, Your Excellency. Oh, will Your Excellency suit? Or do you prefer a, a count? Count will do nicely. Oh, you'll be the first aristocrat I've ever addressed by title. I might enjoy the novelty. Drink up, drink up, count. My head isn't as strong as yours. When I do business with you, I must keep my wits about me. <laughs> You aristocrats, you're all alike. Pretending that money is of no importance for always looking to cheat a poor man out of a kopeck. Well, I won't allow you to cheat Rasputin. You just remember that count. Tell me, little father, why do I have the same feeling about men of God? Hello, no, careful, careful, count. That is close to blasphemy. What if it is? Can I earn forgiveness if I repent? Of course, of course. Why don't you start by... Why don't you start by... By deeding me the land that we've been talking about for, uh... For, uh... Four thousand rubles. But hmm? we've been talking about the price being ten thousand. Well, but that was before you had something to repent. You must pay for penitence and salvation. Don't you think the price is a trifle high? No, no, salvation isn't bought cheaply. Of course. Of course, you, uh... You have other assets. Uh, your wife, I found... You will be... not mention my wife. Huh? Uh, Count, you are very fortunate that I like you. Otherwise, you might find yourself in disfavor at the court. <sighs> Drink up. I don't like your wine. What? <laughs> it's the czar's best Madeira. I must sample your cellar sometime. My wine cellars are open only to my friends. Then we shall soon be drinking your wine, Count. 
I never fail to make a friend of a man I like. You'll find the desire for my company growing upon you. Bravo, bravo, Count. Where did you learn to play the guitar like that? Credit my father. He visited Spain and fell madly in love with the music of the flamenco guitar. Did you know that Rasputin loves music? Oh. Is that important? Tell me, what do you know about poison? Well, I've used it on occasions, of course, but uh, it has its drawbacks even for professionals. Uh, what are they? Difficult to administer. Not in this case. And then the killing time. A quick-acting poison is easily traceable. Slow-acting poison always runs the risk of being detected so that an antidote can be administered. And our poison must be quick. What is the quickest, Colonel? I'm not an expert, but I would say that it was cyanide. That, of course, has the distinctive odor of bitter almonds, which makes it easily detectable by the intended victim. You are right. We can count on his gluttony, but not to that extent. There must be other poisons. Dozens. Why don't we call in an expert? Count Hilston. What do you want me to do? Furnish us, Doctor, with a quick-acting poison whose taste would be concealed by food or wine. I must warn you, Your Excellency, that any poison I know will have unmistakable symptoms that would warn the victim and alert any bystanders. There will be only Rasputin and me. Well, knowing that Rasputin is careful never to be alone with anyone, even women, I wonder how you think you can arrange that, Count Elton. That is not your concern. And this... Colonel, is the door that leads directly to the cellar. What about footprints? There will be tracks in the snow. Both going in and coming out. The way I've planned it, Rasputin will presumably have left my palace and wine cellar in good health. I cannot expect to conceal the fact that he has been here, but the Tsarina and the police will know that he left. Six steps down, and... We arrive here at the door to the room where Rasputin will do his last drinking and eating. Next to the wine cellar there. Uh Colonel, I will want you to see that the table is set for eight. If all preparations for a party aren't set up, that peasant shrewdness of his would smell a trap. The tea and the cake should be on the table. The chocolate will be the poison cake. He has a sweet tooth, and he loves chocolate. And that way, I'll also be able to eat with him without risk. And as you see, my guitar is already on the wall. What time will you want this room ready? We'll be arriving about nine. What about Lassover? Our good doctor is unhappy. But he'll do it. He already has the poison. Good. You'll both wait upstairs. The servants? I've given them the night off. Shouldn't we uh, wait down here? Concealed in case something goes wrong. Nothing will go wrong. You and Lassover will stay upstairs until I come for you. Very well. But I'll feel better if you take my revolver. So, you are so ashamed of your association with me that you take me through back doors, hmm? Rasputin is not accustomed to that kind of hospitality, Count. The type of entertainment that you enjoy, little father, is best done secretly. (laughs) Uh, 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 This seems to be carrying secrecy to extremes, Count. The room is empty. I told you we'd be early. You wanted to hear me play the guitar. I don't like playing when people are more interested in eating and drinking than listening. So, make yourself at home. The wine which you've expressed a desire to sample is on the side. All in good time, Count. Will your beautiful wife join us tonight? I have asked her. And she said? She said, little father, that you frighten her. Oh, she should be more like me and trust in God. I'll get my guitar. It's always easy to be frightened, Count. Um, did you know that only today the Tsarina warned me 
of some new plot against my life. Wouldn't you like a glass of wine? No. I see a samovar here. I'll pour myself some tea. Tea? <laughs> yes, tea. Uh, tea, my dear Count. And you see, you see, I am afraid that if I start with wine, I won't be able properly to judge your skill with that uh, uh, guitar that you hold. Now, are you going to play before the company arrives? Or shall we send for the Princess Irina? I'll play. Hmm? G. Felix. And now, now that I have heard you perform on the guitar, now we are brothers in music. Thank you. And now, you shall play some more for us, Putin, while I eat before the other guests arrive. Try the chocolate cake. It was prepared especially for you. Ah, thank you. Mm. Mm. Oh, if I could play. Me. Guitar like you. <laughs> I'd kill myself and take my place besides the angels. Playing my guitar to their heart. How do you find the cake? Ah, oh, it's delicious. A, a trifle on the sweet side. I think I'll have some more. Where are you going? I'll get you some wine to wash the cake down. Ah, thank you, Felix. But I want you to play. Play to soothe my ears. Here. Here's the wine. Ah, now I get to taste the wine from the cellar of Count Elston. Ah. Yes. Felix, a trifle on the bitter side. A trifle bitter. <laughs> your music, Felix, is better than your wine. I asked you to play. Ah. I'd almost be willing not to have any other guests. Just listen to you play, Felix. Listen to music and eat and drink. When I finish this bottle, I'm sure there'll be another from your cellar. Maybe one not so so bitter, Felix. The same vintage, but a different year, perhaps. Father Grigor. What? What, Felix? You stop playing. Father Grigor, say your prayers. Oh. Is that a gun? Oh, are you a conspirator, Felix? Yes, Father Grigor. You'll do no more evil. You'll never again put your filthy hands on my wife. You are dead! He's finished. The monster is dead. Were those shots I heard? Yes. Yes, I had to shoot. The poison didn't work. Absurd. I put enough poison in the cake to have killed ten he men. He ate every crumb of the cake and drank a whole bottle of wine. But all that happened was that he, he got a thick tongue. I had to shoot him. I had to. Of course, of course. It's not possible. He, he should have died. He had to die. Stop mumbling, doctor. He's dead. We have work to do. What could have kept him alive? It's, it's like the picture of the virgin all over. Forget it, doctor. Remember... You will put on Rasputin's overcoat. You will be driven back to the palace by the Count. Enter Rasputin's quarters, then take off the overcoat and leave, making sure no one sees you. I think I want some brandy before... We... What? what was that? Nothing. I didn't hear anything. Good Lord. He's lying. It's not possible. I know I shot him. He's the Antichrist. He is. You're certain you hit him, Count? I saw him fall! Then let's see who or what's making that noise. I'll stay here. You'll come with us. Come on. There he is. He's at the door. If he gets out of the courtyard, we'll ruin it. He won't, and that's an ironclad guarantee from the pistol expert in the Russian army. Is the 
the doctor all right? Depends on what you mean by all right. He went through with impersonating Rasputin. He was seen wearing Rasputin's overcoat. Then I took him home and to bed. Yeah, here's a good place. The river's deep. The bridge railing is low. All right, give me a hand with the body. Yeah. Come on, drag it. Yeah. Here we go. All right, there's no one around. Now, get it up on the railing. And over. Uh, thank you, Colonel. Thank you. I think together we may have saved Mother Russia. <laughs> Count Elston was mistaken. Rasputin's prediction came true. Within six months after his death, the Tsar and Tsarina had lost their throne and their lives. And the Tsarevich was dead. Ironically, Count Elston and his accomplices, sentenced to exile, found their lives saved by their banishment. I'll be back shortly. What can you do to a family car to make it more than just roomy, comfortable, and utilitarian? Well, you could call it a Buick LeSabre, for starters. That'll get you the kinds of things you'd normally expect from a family car, plus some pretty uncommon family car traits. Like a level of exterior and interior elegance befitting a night on the town. The distinct formal roof line on the four-door hardtop LeSabre is highlighted by opera windows on either side. On the inside, you'll find comfortable cloth or vinyl seats, plush carpeting throughout, plus available options such as tilt steering wheel and automatic climate control air conditioning to turn ordinary errand running into motoring for pleasure. The 1975 Buick LeSabre. Consider it a family car as well as an instrument of pleasure. Buick's LeSabre. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Putin's place as the religious figure who held sway over the Tsar and his family is unquestioned. Still open to conjecture, however, is whether Rasputin was a maligned saint or a devil. Here is the opinion of the Tsarina Alexandra in a handwritten note she had placed in his coffin. It reads, My dear martyr, give me thy blessing." And may it always follow me on the sad and dreary path I have yet to traverse here below. And remember us from on high in your holy prayers. Signed, Alexandra. Our cast included Norman Rose, Anne Fatoniak, Mason Adams, Jean Gillespie, Jackson Beck, Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now... A preview of our next tale. What's the matter? A, a matter? The way you look when you open that letter. Mary? What is it? Now, let me see that letter. No, 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 Claudia. I'll just give it to Mr. Hammond when... Uh, Mary, we... please, let me have that letter. All right. What? What? Mary, did you read this? Well, I glanced at it enough to... Todd, dearest, of course I love you as deeply, passionately, as you love me. And you're right. Claudia does stand between us. So, dearest heart, I've changed my mind. I will go along with your plan to put her out of the way. Signed... Margot. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.